This is a world-class project. This is Humber Gas Pipeline Project. Hi, Andrew. Hi, John. How are you? Tell us a little bit about this project. This is a 4.8 kilometer tunnel under the River Humber. Uh, reaches from Goxhill to a place called Paul on the far side. Tell us a little about the type of TBM we've got and, and what, what is it drilling in? Right, the TBM is full face slurry TBM that has a cutter head on it and you feed slurry or water into the head. It gets mushed up with a cutter head and it's returned back to the, through the tunnel and into a slurry treatment plant. And are there any particular technical challenges? Uh, Technically, uh, yes, we won this contract on an alternative uh, bid in that we had a conceptual design and we uh, modified that by lifting the tunnel uh, and steepening it, which meant we could shorten it. The tunnel build is crucial to the insertion of the pipe, so sure, yeah. just very similar to, I know this is not exactly a pipe or a collar, but it gives you a good indication the pipe was going to slide through on the invert and any step here will cause damage to the, uh, the collar on the pipe and increase the thrust loads. So we don't have much tolerance it. in no, no. these segments being we're, we're down to five millimetres is our maximum. Hi there. Hi there. I'm Mark Stott. I'm the pipeline project engineer. Well, basically we are welding up uh, pipes into what we call pipe strings, uh, ready for insertion through the tunnel once the tunnel is completed. Basically, they need to weld up eight of them, uh, 620 meters long each, and each one will weigh approximately 850 tons. So, has this ever been done before? I know it's been done on a project in Australia, not quite this way. Once we complete the insertion, it will be 4,860 meters. The project in Australia was 4,350 meters, so it should be the longest in the world. And we're going to flood the tunnel. Yes. <laughs> to help. <laughs> to help push the pipe through, yes. Yeah, that sounds, uh, sounds a bit mad, but it actually helps. Uh, it means you don't need to put anything in the tunnel to assist the insertion. We'll be doing that using what we call pipe thrusters. You need two of those with 500 tonnes capacity each, and it basically grips the pipe and just pushes, and we just keep pushing. So this first pipe goes into the tunnel and then we slide the next pipe over, weld it to it and then push and just keep pushing until all eight pipes have gone through the tunnel. Hi Sam, how are you doing? Ah, good, thank you. So what's your role on this project? Um, I'm the environmental manager for the joint venture. I understand this particular project we've got some, because of where we're working, we've got some real environmental challenges probably about 500 metres in, in that direction um, is the Humber Estuary um, and that's probably one of the most highly protected sites in Europe and it provides, provides like a unique habitat for things like migratory birds, uh, protected species such as marsh harrier. Um, so that has caused us a few, few challenges in, in the past. And what we're doing here is just is part of treating the water that is generated as part of the tunnelling process. So we have a series of lagoons that settles the suspended solids um, and we put it through a water treatment plant then it goes through this swale and we discharge this into the uh, East Marsh Ditch. And we have to have a special permit in place from the Environment Agency to do that. So tell me, what are we doing to reduce carbon? The main, main thing that we've done is, um, which is quite challenging in itself, we spent a lot of time, is, is embedding it within the BIM model for the project. It models cost and carbon at the same time, which is quite important when you're modelling carbon. Using that carbon model, we can demonstrate savings in carbon um, and cost as well at the same time, because they're, they're both linked together. The footprint on this site is pretty big, so what other challenges have you had? Surrounding all the fields that we work in, we've got uh, ditches that we've been discharging water into, but we have protected species in those ditches, so we have water bowls, so we've had to apply for licences to, to undertake that work. The whole project had to obtain a development consent order from, the, uh, from basically the planning authority um, and the government in order for the project to go ahead. Um, and every the, well, the project is split into seven stages, um, and in order to start every stage of that development of this project, we have to get sign-off from the council. And we've hit the target on, on all those DCO submission stages. For the main shaft where we have to dig down um, and excavate, 
we were actually digging into a principal aquifer. What the Environment Agency were concerned with, we had to pump water out of the aquifer. If we just pumped water and didn't put it back into the aquifer, we would potentially draw salt water from the estuary inland and that would uh, pollute the uh, aquifer 100 plus years and you could do nothing about it. So that would probably be the end of this project if we hadn't have done that correctly. And at the very end of this project, I understand that all of this has got to go. We've started work on that already actually. Really? Yeah, um, yeah, we still haven't finished the tunnel, but we're actually looking at what we need to do to demobilise this site because it's, it'll be a big uh, demolition project really. At the end of it, there's lots of concrete reinforced concrete, steel, that we need to get rid of. Um, so we need to make sure that we find outlets for that so we can reuse and recycle as much as possible and save money at the same time doing it. So it's gonna be a, a big challenge. Sam, thank you so much. That was really interesting. Yeah, thanks. Cheers. Joe, you, whenever I come here, you've always got such a great smile on your face. What's this, why is this project so cool? How many people can say they've worked on such a unique project? We've got such specialists from all over the world, never mind the UK, and the lessons that I have learnt, it's been amazing, absolutely amazing. So pleased I joined the team. Great. And we've done some great community work here. Didn't we have a community day? We did, yep. We had a family and community day, so we invited staff's family and friends over, as well as members of the local community and we brought them out in the minibuses, showed them all around site, explained obviously at a, a high level as to about the project and what we are doing and they don't, didn't really understand just how big this project is and then when they came out around site they were absolutely astounded and especially when they brought the kids, the kids just thought it was the best day out ever. That's fantastic Jay, thanks very much. Not a problem at all. So I hope you agree with me that showcasing this project at Humber has been really worthwhile. We've heard from some great people about the engineering, environmental challenges that this project's posed. We've also heard about some great community engagement. But behind me is the River Humber. And on the other side is Paul. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that TBM break through next year. <laughs>